and global economy and development issues. Dr. Reddy, starting with the global financial crisis, referred to the financial crisis per se being over or more or less over, the economic crisis continuing and the political crisis, we are heading for a political crisis. It would indeed be interesting for anyone to ask the question, how is one going to lay down the boundaries between this? Uh, they are so closely interconnected, economic, financial, economic, social, political, it would be extremely difficult indeed to lay down the boundaries and to say we finish financial here and then economic begins next, so on and so forth. Uh, then having gone through the reasons for the crisis, the credit, uh, preferred to something like this. Uh, these problems have not been resolved to the extent that there won't be another crisis. I doubt it very much whether in uh, as long as we have we are in a global capitalistic system, whether there will be any time in the future when we can say crisis problem has been completely resolved and there won't be any crisis. I am sure the credit did not mean that, that there will be a time when uh, we will reach a period where we can be confident that the crisis problem is completely sorted up. But um, if that was what was meant, then I think I would argue that this is too optimistic within a capitalistic system. Uh, so the challenges uh, Dr. Reddy referred to towards the end, volatilities in commodity markets, financial markets, exchange rate, uh, capital flows, this indeed would be something which would be bothering small developing countries like ours and uh, I really do not see any uh, prospects of these problems being resolved in the near future. I told you I will say a few things which I thought I will say since I did not have any paper in advance to prepare for this panel discussion. I jotted down a few notes. My topic is development within an unequal world subject to uneven change. Uh, on this subject also, I am not going to talk to you on uh, complete uh, coverage of the subject or at least uh, near complete coverage of the subject, but a few points. Not a talk about the global economic relationships and organizations, how they influence various economic variables in a developing country. For example, I will not be talking about how global economic movements, for example, the cyclical changes uh, affecting what the economists are fond of talking about, uh, trade flows, uh, uh, FDIs, foreign aid, uh, financial crises, uh, international monetary reforms and that sort of thing. Uh, let me talk something beyond this, on something beyond this subject area. Something which we Sri Lankans, to Sri Lankans is very <coughs> close. My talk will be largely on some aspects of the political economy of international relations and their impacts on development processes of developing countries. I hope I will not be considered 
irrelevant in this workshop on new directions in financial regulation. Um, I have not had any practical sort of experience in this area. So I am, I have no competence in talking about matters of financial regulation. So let me talk about the political economy issues, a few of them. The characteristic features of the global system as it stands today, looking at it from a small country point of view, uh, we are aware of, the tech, we're aware of how the technology has brought countries and societies closer together than ever before. It is an increasingly unequal, unequal world despite the argument that technology has reduced these inequalities substantially. Incomes, wealth, natural and human resources, military and political power, etc. are concentrated in a few powerful countries. The rest of the world consists mostly of those unable to make their voices heard globally or adequately. This inequality in distribution of power affects global decision making. Then the process of development over time has been uneven. The tendency of power elites of those societies which have advanced the most at a particular time to kick away the ladders that help them to go up in wealth, incomes and economic power in the first instance. There is so much kicking away the ladder is going on. The methods countries have used in their early stages of development to grow up, go up in the ladder are being abandoned and are not being allowed to be used by the countries which are waiting to, waiting to develop. So, development in the lagging nations, uh, many problems are created in this sense. Some achieve development by, some of these countries have achieved development by working together, asking no questions, working together with global and regional superpowers. For example, through that mechanism, these countries ensure that they have markets for certain kinds of export-oriented activities. And also in the case of some countries, their global location, particularly during the Cold War days, there are particular locations have helped these countries to obtain the United States and other countries' assistance being buffers against uh, growth of communism. Countries in the third world taking non-aligned or openly hostile stances to superpowers face numerous obstacles either directly from these superpowers or through multilateral agencies dominated by them. When the, sec when the second element which I have mentioned earlier was combined with domestic mismanagement of socio-economic affairs, the people in those countries were doomed to continue in underdevelopment for longer than necessary. Many mechanisms have been in operation to bring the impact of global relations on development process. I have mentioned about the element of kicking away the ladders, preventing the use of possible domestic policy instruments to achieve development in these countries. Foreign assistance has been used often to not to promote the development in these countries, but to delay it, delay it. Conditionality has been also similarly used by international agencies. 
One size fits all kind of development models have been practiced, which did not work in many countries. And the FDI also has been operating, not, or not always, to promote development in these countries. Among many mechanisms, let me focus on one mechanism here, because it is so close to us, having gone through a very difficult period of uh, very difficult period of violent conflict and trying to achieve lasting peace here, namely the influence of global system on domestic conflicts. In a large number of developing countries, in the recent past as well as contemporaneously, violent conflicts have affected development processes very adversely. We have the Sri Lankan experience, and we are already we are continuing to observe the experiences of Afghanistan, countries like Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, and so on. The impact of violent conflicts on development, anyone can go on talking about it for a long time, but I need not waste your time on it. But conflicts are more often than not connected to foreign influences more often than not connected to foreign sometimes instigated, sometimes supported. During Cold War, for example, third world conflicts were conceptualized in communist, anti-communist uh, rhetoric. Or advanced countries used the rhetoric, this particular rhetoric to justify movement, justify involvement in conflicts in other countries. There were also instrument, instrumental reasons. For example, the resources available in those countries, investment locations in those countries, and to capitalize on these things, they went in for involvement and interference in uh, these other countries and creating conflicts. In the early post-Cold War period, the interest of advanced countries in development, developing country conflicts appeared to have diminished in the early post-Cold War period. But in more recent times, for example in the Middle East for, for instrumental reasons, there are cases of advanced countries directly instigating and supporting conflicts. Many advanced countries intervention advanced country intervention in third world conflicts are for the intervening intervening countries national interest for instrumental reasons but high sounding ideals and social objectives are presented as a pretext of such intervention democracy human rights are to be right to protect, Govern, good governance. These are the, this is the facade behind which these countries are interested in extending their power and extending the practices of, if I may use the term, neo-colonialism. When pre-intervention and post-intervention conditions are compared and contrasted. One wonders whether things have improved as a result of that intervention, although the claim was, intervention claim was for improvement of conditions. Again, there is no one single model of good governance, I believe. There is a enormous country diversity. And as a result, there is also <coughs> Huge differences in political terms, huge differences also in historical and cultural terms. Similarly, no one-size-fits-all development path and strategy, and also no one-size-fits-all uh, democratic model or a governance model. So managing global influences in pro-development manner, 